Hey, Gifted Crafters, welcome back for another Saturday Crafter Noon. Thank you all for tuning in today. I see a lot of activity going on in the chat, and I am tuning in from sunny South Florida, where it's a little bit warm today. So I hope that wherever you're tuning in from, that it is nice weather where you're at. I know we've had some crazy weather the past few minutes so i hope that everyone is just staying safe so if you're tuning in for the first time my name is nancy with gifts hq and i host these weekly live sessions to just talk about all things crafty from knitting crocheting decoupage embroidery and just so much more we like to share tips tricks and ideas so feel free to jump into the chat say hello to some friends and share some information with us because we're all about sharing the information so we can all become better crafters so thank you again for tuning in today now i am a girl that just loves the holidays so if you noticed on um, scrolling across you've seen a couple of holidays that are typically not things that you find on your calendar or maybe you may not even know exist so today actually is husband appreciation day so i know i'm very appreciative of my husband and if you've tuned in last week you will know exactly why so um to all the husbands out there you know let's just appreciate them just a little bit more today <laughs> it is also record store day so again if you tuned in last week like these holidays were just like incredible when i saw them <laughs> they kind of really spoke to us um so last week um we had a very special session if you didn't get to tune in that was a uh, live number 86 so go ahead and tune into that one today's live number 87 so can't believe we've been live for 87 times it's just amazing um but it is also volunteer recognition day and that's just one of my so favorite holidays because we you know we spend a lot of time with different volunteers um we are pretty active in special olympics which is one of the uh, organizations that my son participates with and we do a lot of things with them so i truly appreciate all of the volunteers that have helped out in that organization and there's so many other organizations that are out there you know so please just go ahead and you know just go ahead and, and and recognize them because they do a lot of hard work and you know it's just really really amazing okay so i see a lot of things going on in the chat <laughs> oh today is oh we have a birthday out there so i see in the chat robin's quilt basket today is her husband's birthday so happy birthday to robin's quilt basket's husband <laughs> today's the perfect day since it's husband appreciation day so hope you have a fun day with your husband and spend some quality time together so let's just jump in because i know i see a whole bunch of people on there but i do see Amy Bullis, I see Crafting with Robin, Donna Phillips, Jackie Hallman, Jenny Owens, Crazy, Crazy Fam, L.A. Garrity, Mar Marilyn, I see One Minute Tips, I see Robin's Quilt Basket, I see Sassy, Yvonne Hudson, and thank you guys all again for tuning in. I really appreciate you supporting the channel. So um, if you didn't get to tune in last week, I'll give you a little recap. We kind of did a unveiling of our Project X. And so I was dropping little hints over and over all over the place. So if you're not part of our Facebook group, go ahead and join that. Um, we do a lot of information that we um, put out there as well. But we were really excited to kind of unveil our brand new CD. This is Gifts HQ Music Crafting Tunes. And there are about 10 songs in the CD. And the CD are all just crafting songs about crocheting, knitting, I mean, embroidery, there were all kinds of pretty fun little tunes and I was hoping that it would inspire more crafters out there and they would truly enjoy, you know, listening to the CD while they're in your craft room. So, you know, it's it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of work putting it together. We spent a lot of months um, just kind of doing this and we were so excited to unveil it last week. Now, if you're interested in this and you'd like to support the channel 
um, you can purchase the digital download of the CD in Amazon Digital. So if you go to Amazon Digital, type in Gifts HQ Crafting Tunes, you should be able to download them there. You can also uh, listen to the songs on Spotify, or if you have iTunes, you can hear them as well. Um, if you are interested in getting a physical CD, um, we kind of sold out for the ones that we ordered. So we put in another order and I haven't heard back as to when they would get here yet. So just go ahead and send us an email and I'll put you on the list so that you can, you know, when the, the shipment comes in, we'll be able to ship them out and we'll be able to um, get a CD over to you. Um, if you're purchasing the CD, the album is $9.49. And the single songs are 99 cents. So um, that is out there and it's available. It was a lot of work. I think a lot of people really loved it. Just let me know, you know, which ones were your favorite song. If you really enjoyed the CD, I'm looking to kind of get some feedback um, to see, you know, if we're going to go ahead and work on maybe volume two, because this one was volume one. So um, I'm looking to get some ideas, get some inspiration. Let me know which ones you like the best. Tell me which songs you enjoyed. Um, and, you know, I'm trying to kind of take a little break and just kind of think about, you know, what volume two will look like. And, you know, maybe we'll get another um, set out there. So these just make really great gifts for other fellow crafters. If you want to gift them out, maybe it's somebody's birthday or maybe for Mother's Day that's coming up. Or you can also, you know, get them all done, you know, a bunch of CDs and stuff, songs that you can get just for yourself when you're crafting. So um, I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, we did have a giveaway last week and we had three winners. So we want to congratulate Linda Gray, Crafting with Robin and One Minute Tips. Um, all three are getting a physical CD signed by me um, and they are on the way. I checked this morning and I believe only one person has received it. The other two is still kind of in transit. So hopefully you guys will be getting it soon. Just kind of let me know um, so that I know that you did get it. So I um, I'm really excited to you know kind of get these out and and i really want to hear some feedback to see you know which ones what types of songs what would you like to hear maybe just like drop that into the chat i would really love to know you know what you would be interested in and you know we would probably incorporate that maybe for volume two so it was a lot of fun putting it together but a lot of hard work i can tell you as well but i hope you guys really enjoyed it okay so Moving on for this week, I've got um, a kind of a little project that we can do. Now, I want to introduce to you a ruler that I purchased. And it's not just kind of any ruler. It's kind of a ruler that's specific for a type of block that you can make. And with the block, you can make all kinds of things, table runners. Um, you can make full blown quilts. You can do wall hangings. You can do so many things with it. It is called the pineapple trim tool. And it's a type of ruler that will allow you to make either a four, five, or a six inch block. And I'm gonna kind of move this little mat over. I'm gonna use my little Martelli mat. I'm gonna move some of this over here just because it'll show the ruler a whole lot better. And you can kind of see things that I'm gonna point out to you. So let me just move some of this over here, make it so that you guys can see this. And yes, I love my little Martelli mat. It's something that, you know, I, my sister was able to get for me, the little gift. So I love my little mat. It allows me to kind of iron. Um, you can also do cutting. It's got that, you know, like that lazy Susan with the Velcro on the bottom, makes it very easy to spin things around. Um, as you're cutting and ironing. So really nice. Okay, so this is the pineapple trim tool. And it's a great ruler and it's a great project that you can make. You can do so many things with this. 
a little bit of a learning curve in terms of how to work it. But they, I have to say they did a great job. This ruler is by Creative Grids. Um, so one of my favorites that are out there. So Creative Grids really has some awesome um, rulers out there. And this is just one of the ones that you can get. They have them in different sizes. This one is the mini. They also have two others that give you bigger blocks. This will give you again the four, five, or six inch block. I I was fine with trying out the mini. I was a little um, a little hesitant when I first got it. It's a lot of lines, a lot of things going on here. It does give you a little booklet that you can do. You can look at, and it does have kind of the instructions. But I know. Um, a lot of crafters, you know, tend to want to have like a little video or something to follow along because it is a little bit difficult sometimes to, you know, figure it out. But let me kind of break down the ruler for you a little bit because there's a lot going on here. So I'm going to grab my little pointer here. And the first thing you'll notice is there's tons of little lines and things. And I'm going to see if I can get this a little closer for you guys. So there's all kinds of things going on here. You've got little squares going across. You've got lines. You've got a quarter inch seam coming here. You've got this at an angle, you know, so there's all kinds of things happening with this ruler. But in order for you to understand how to make the pineapple trim tool, um, the pineapple trim block, um, you have to understand how to work this ruler. Now, what will it look like when you're done? I give you a little sample. So this is what you end up with. And this is just one little block here. And this is a six inch block. So as you can see here, there's a lot of layers going on here. And I'll give you a little bit of a close up. Okay. There's a lot of layers going on here. And the fun thing about this is that you're only doing this with two fabrics. Now I am using, and for this particular block, I did use, and you guys know I like my little dollar store. So I only use two little scraps from the dollar store. And I'm gonna do an, another one with you. We probably won't be able to finish it because it'll take me a little bit longer, but I wanted to kind of get you started. Once you learn a couple of uh, rows of this, you'll be good and you'll know how to finish it off. But I got two little fat quarters here from Crafter Square from the Dollar Tree. And with this, I can make a block. And that's what I used for this as well. This is this fabric was also from the Dollar Tree. So if you have fabrics in your stash, this is a great uh, scrap buster. You know, if you want to run to, out to the dollar store and grab some you can you know you just pick two coordinating fabrics that's all you need on this it's not a ton of fabric now if you're going to be making multiple blocks which you can and then you can kind of connect them and do like a little table runner or things like that then of course you're going to want to have some more now i'm just going to show you how to do just the block as you can see here it's it looks complex but it really is not you just have to kind of break it down and know how to work the ruler. So I'm going to show that to you here. So let's take a look at the ruler itself. Okay. So one of the, one of the best things that I first loved about the ruler, and I'm going to kind of turn it around and see with this yellow background, if you can see it a little bit here, it's probably hard to see. Maybe that with this little angle, you can see they it has a lot of these little dots here these are kind of like the glue grips and one of the great things about this is that the ruler doesn't slide around it has a lot of these little um dots on here they're like kind of a i forget what they call it a group um like a non-slip it's a non-slip surface it's a liquid that they put on the glue so that they don't move around 
which is really nice because for this particular type of ruler you don't want it slipping around because it can kind of distort the block that you're trying to make so i love that they have that all around the ruler so this thing really is steady and stays in place once you have it here now the pricing on the ruler is a little pricey it is but that's why i got the mini and i said i'm gonna try the mini out just to see and i i really love it i mean i would like to get the bigger one now to get the bigger blocks but uh, i'm kind of holding myself let me let me make sure that i finish this project and then you know i'm gonna see if i can get another one but you know once you do this you're gonna kind of be addicted to it you're gonna want to make more of these blocks i can guarantee it <laughs> okay so first off it doesn't slip around because it has that little glue dots that kind of make it you know resistant to be slipping around which is great the other thing that this ruler does is it does have these squares here that go across now you're going to be lining up your fabrics underneath this ruler with these squares and it's going to ensure that when you do your cuts they're going to come out perfect and it's amazing because you can make mistakes and maybe you can be off by a little bit but if you're not a hundred percent let's say you're 90 percent you're still going to come out with a fantastic block it doesn't have to be spot a hundred percent this ruler really helps you to make the block so that it comes out really nice and I love that they have, you know, these dotted lines that go across. These are all things that help you line up your block so that you can make the cut and it comes out really nice. Um, it, it kind of works in rounds. So every time you sew a portion onto your block, you're, you're, we're calling it a round. And every round is going to line up. So the squares going here you're always going to start with the first square so this will be round one then you're going to do round two and then you're going to go off to three four five six seven eight and nine now the even number rounds with the exception of one is going to be here lining up these squares the odd number ones are going to be lined up using this 45 degree angle that we see here and then you would of course at the end trim off the block and it does give you that quarter inch seam allowance as well but all of these lines that are here the dotted lines going across and down are to help you align your block so that you make the perfect cut so let's get started so I can show you exactly how this works so they know it kind of looks a little confusing you can be a little intimidated about it because there's a lot going on in the ruler but trust me it's really not too bad and if you purchase this um, you will get the instructions here and it does have the cutting guide on here as well and the cutting guide does tell you you know how much to cut for each round or you can just cut strips and just kind of do it as you go along so what i've done just kind of just save time is i opened up my two packages from crafter square and i went ahead and pressed them so that they were nice and flat and then i went ahead and i cut them into strips okay and the instructions do tell you here you're going to need one and a quarter inch strips so i have two piles here cut at one and a quarter inch and these are the strips that you're going to need so i just took my little fat quarter and i cut them down to one and a quarter inch strips and again it's just two fabrics that you're going to need okay so the other piece that you're going to need is the very first start of it which is the actual square now the square is the only piece that's going to be measured a little bit different you're going to cut that at one and a half inch 
So you're going to take a strip, go ahead and cut it at one and a half inch and make that a square. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna put this over to the side here. Keep those there. And let me just put the ruler over to the side as well. Put my little pointer back for now. And I'll put this down. Okay. So I'll go ahead and get your rotary cutter. You're going to want to make sure that you have a nice fresh blade on here because you're going to be making several cuts and you want them to be nice and clean. Now, this is one strip that I cut at one and a half inch. I'm going to grab another ruler, just makes it easier for me. And I just want to cut this at one and a half inch squared. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now I'm left-handed, so little odd for me, but you just want to line it up one and a half inch and then go ahead and cut that off. So here it is. I've got one and a half inch square. And then all I'm going to do is go ahead and start the block. This is the only piece that you're going to need at one and a half inch. You want to do one and a half inch squared all the way around. And then you're going to start off your block. And with that, you're going to go ahead and take a strip of your one and a quarter strip. And you want to always use opposite um, strips. So if I started off with this solid orange color, I'm going to offset it with the other fabric that I'm using. So you have two uh, coordinating fabrics that you're using. So you want to make sure that you are just, you know, for every round, you're going to be using the other fabric. So you're always going to be alternating for every round. So I can put this over to the side and all I'm going to do now is I have my strips. Okay, I'm going to be cutting the strips and I want to create my square. Now, the very first round that you do, it really doesn't matter too much on the size. You just need to make sure that you have enough to cover the entire square side to side. So I could literally just take this and I can just, you know, just kind of eyeball it, making sure that the entire square is covered. And then I'm going to take this and I am just going to go ahead and cut that. Right. It doesn't matter as long as my entire square is going to be covered, because what you're going to do is you're going to take this right size together and you're going to sew right along the side at a scant quarter inch seam allowance, not a quarter inch. You're going to do a scant quarter inch. There's a little bit less, right? So you just adjust for that. You're going to go ahead and sew this across. You're going to do that on the other side as well. And on each side of the square, you're going to go ahead and sew that all the way. So when you're done, I can show you one that I have and I use larger little strips even just to kind of show you. You see, it doesn't need to be exact. I did mine a little exaggerated. You know, I, I, I did them a little bit longer than I needed to just so I can show you. And let me put it on the yellow background so it shows a little bit better. And you can see that. You can see here how I have my orange square in the middle and then I have my contrasting fabric that I just sewed quarter inch seam, two sides here, and then I flipped it and I did the two sides here. So it's just a little square. Okay. Very, very simple. Now it looks like a hot mess, right? Don't worry. Don't worry about that because now comes the little magic that starts happening. So you've gone ahead, you've got your one and a half inch center square. 
Then you took your one and a quarter inch strips. You sewed them to the side at a one and a quarter inch scant, right? And then you sewed the other two, again, quarter inch scant. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your ruler and you're gonna find where it says round one and you're going to see a white box that says round one. You wanna take that ruler and line it up with that square. And it'll be nice to kind of see, okay, look, my square fits in the box. If you're off a little bit, you'll see that you'll be off because you're centering your fabric right underneath the ruler. So you can see that here, right? And then you're gonna see how the lines kind of help to guide you. So in this first round, it's kind of can be a little confusing, but as long as you line up your square here under the first round, and you make sure that you're nice and centered in there, your center line is going to naturally occur at a 45 degree angle, and you're going to be able to start that pineapple block, right? Now, what this is doing also, once you have this squared in the first block, you're gonna go ahead and get your rotary cutter and you're gonna chop all of this off. And you're going to then do that for every side. So you'll be rotating it around until you get all of the sides. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'll show you what it looks like. So I've got round one. My square is inside. Now I'm normally standing up, but for the for this, you know, I'm sitting down. So it's a little bit more difficult, but that's okay. I'm gonna just hold my ruler down and cut all the way across and you're going to cut all of that off just trim it all away okay then what you're going to do is lift up your ruler you're going to rotate and then line it up again right underneath that round one square make sure you're nice and centered okay then again Take your rotary cutter, go ahead and cut that piece. Okay, you're starting to see how it's starting to come out. We're going to rotate it yet again. Okay, again, line it up underneath the ruler. Take your rotary cutter and cut that piece off. And then one more time, because we've got to get all four sides, line it up again, and cut. And you end up with a super cute, and I'll put this on here so you can see it. It's a really cute little mini block. <laughs> So really, really neat. That's how it kind of gets started. So that is just round one, and that's just kind of the starting point, right? So you have all this. It does have a little bit of a waist to it, but just because I did make them pretty long, um, you don't really have to. So it's, you know, if you want to just cut them into strips where you're covering the, the sides of the square, that's totally fine. You won't have as much waste um, as I just did. But once you've done that, you end up with the square and then you're ready to start round two. And so for round two, we've already had this fabric. So I'm going to flip to my solid orange fabric and that is going to be my round two piece. And so round two will be the same thing again. The only thing you're going to do is you're going to head up, line it up on top, right sides together, and again, quarter inch scant seam allowance. And you're going to do that for every side. Okay, and then once you've cut those, 
you can go ahead and do that. Now, if you're not sure how much to cut and, and you're a little iffy on, you know, where you need to cut, the instructions do tell you. You can just kind of eyeball it as long as you make sure that the sides are covered or you can follow the round strip cuts that they have laid out for you on the instructions. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. So on here, in the instructions here, it says round one, if you can see that, it does have all of the different rounds and the measurements for the round. So round one, it would be one and a half inch, right? So you've already cut them into strips of one and a quarter. So then all you would have to do is measure one and a half inch, cut it, and then that's what you would put here onto your block. And so I've got one here where I went ahead and I, I kind of flipped it. You know, on this one, I have the little orange in the middle. On this one, I used the alternate fabric with the little um, colors on it as the middle, and I have my orange coming out as my first round. So you can see how they can look different. But it's funny how you can kind of just flip flop fabrics and then you can make two different blocks. It'll be coordinating with the same colors, just turns out a little bit different. And that's pretty neat because then you can kind of stack them together and, you know, make a quilt or make a, a wall hanging. You can make the table runner and it'll look really cute because your fabrics are kind of contrasting each other for every block. So pretty neat on that. So on here, you then take this and what you're going to want to do at the end of each round is you want to make sure that you do iron it. Okay. Go ahead and iron them down because that does really help. You don't want um, it not to be ironed. So I'm just going to grab my little mini iron here that kind of like to use for these little projects here. And let me see if I can get this plugged in. Okay. Let's move my little pointer out of the way. And we're just going to wait for this to heat up a little bit. And you can see here that once you've sewn this at the quarter inch scant, you know, it's, it's, you're going to see it here, what it looks like in the back. Oops. And then once you have it all sewn, this is what your next round is going to look like. So it looks like a little plus sign going on here, right? But you're going to continue to build this block. And if you can see here, if you look at the finished block that I have, you can see how my center has started. And you can kind of see where this goes. So this would be right here in the middle. And so you'll see this is where you're starting your block. And then you're going to continue to work your way out, right? Until you reach the size that you want. Now, you can do three different sizes with this ruler, right? Your blocks can be either four inch, five inch, or six inch. So, you know, depending how big or small you want it to be, you know, will be up to how many rounds you need to go. Obviously, if you're doing the six inch block, you're going to want to do all nine rounds. So you'll want to make sure, I'm sorry, all 10 rounds. So you'll want to make sure that um, you do all 10 rounds if you're doing the six inches. Um, the four and five inches are less rounds. And let me see if I can tell you how many rounds they are. Uh, let's see. So four. This is for the four inch block. You're going to do six rounds. And for the five inch block, you're going to stop after row eight. And then um, for the six inch, obviously, it's going to be up through row 10. So you do have to kind of keep track of the rounds, but I found it an easy way to just kind of count it is you never count that center block. You're going to count this as your first row. So you'll do alternate colors going all the way out. So 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then you're going to have your corners that you're going to put in at the end so that you can square it off. So that's pretty much how you put your block together. But I'm going to see, I'm going to heat this up. I think it's heated up now. So let's just go ahead and press this. You're going to want to make sure that it's nice and flat. And of course, got to grab my clapper. If you have one, go ahead and use it. It helps to make the seams nice and flat, which really does help in the end. Okay, and then I'm going to kind of just put this over to the side here. And I'm going to go ahead and grab my rotary cutter and I'm going to grab the trim tool here. And again, we are on round number two. So we're going to look for the square that says round two and you're going to line up your square underneath that. So go ahead and line that up. And then you're also going to use your grid marks here to help you. Okay, so I'm, let me just line this up here. Okay, and let me just grab my pointer so you can see here my dotted lines here and here are helping me line up my fabric to make sure that I'm nice and straight. You're also going to notice as you continue to go down more rows that you have this 45 degree angled cut that's right in the center. You're going to want to line up your block with this line just to make sure that you are centered and it comes out nice. So these are all here to help you so that it really, you know, you can't make a mistake on the cut as long as you follow the rounds and you just take your time to line things up. So when we have it all lined up, I'm going to take my rotary cutter and you're going to go ahead and cut over here. And then you're going to kind of want to turn this I'm gonna hold it again and cut the other side. Now you'll still have to flip it around and cut again. So let's do this again. I'm going to line it up here. I'm usually standing up, so it makes it a little hard for me. Okay. Oops, I moved a little bit there. There we go. Nice and lined up. Take my rotary cutter, cut these little tiny pieces, and the other side as well. Great. So now that you have it cut up, you again will have your next round. So let's grab this here. And you're going to see the block is beginning to grow. And so I'll grab my iron here. Go ahead and iron it. Looks a little crazy. It's kind of like, well, I'm not sure if I'm doing this right. Trust me, you are. Just keep going, right? So the next thing you want to do, you did round one, you've done round two, now you're going to do round three. Now, if you remember what I told you on the ruler itself, the boxes here in the middle are for the even rounds. Okay, we did round one, that's your starting point, that's why the box is white, but then you have all the other ones in black. These are rounds two, four, six, eight, and ten. Okay, you want to make sure these are your even rounds. When you start getting two, round three, five, seven, and nine, you're going to be using this 45 degree angle to line up with in order to make the cut. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna push this over. And I've already used my multicolored fabric, so I'm gonna go back now to my solid color. 
and I'm going to take my solid color fabric and if I'm following this and want to cut the fabric sizes exact, I know that I am on round number three. And so my strip is one and a quarter inch width, and I'm gonna wanna cut this at two and a half inches. That's what the directions call for for the next round. So let's grab my other ruler here. I wanna do two and a half inches. And I'll line that up and you're always going to need four cuts because you, you have the four sides of the square that you want to sew your scant quarter inch seam. So go ahead and once you've lined it up you've got two and a half inches because we're doing round three and that's what round three calls for. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that. And I'm going to need four of those. So let me just cut four of them out. Okay. And you want to just kind of line it up, make sure you're doing it correctly for all of them. That's two. Kind of slip there. There's three, whoops, I missed that hand. And this is the last cut. Okay, so we've got four cut with, the, again, you've got um, one and a half width and then two and a quarter as the length. Now I'm going to take this to my block and I'm going to go ahead and line this up and bring this over to my sewing machine. Again, doing a quarter inch scant seam allowance. So let me drag this over and we're going to sew that in. I can move this space over here. And let me drag the ruler on this side. Okay. Okay. Careful with that iron because it is getting pretty hot. <laughs> Can feel it. Alrighty. So we're gonna get and take this little square, line it up. And since I cut it to size, you'll see that my fabric is covering the entire square, which is exactly what you want. So whether you measure it to the exact size or you can just leave it as one long strip and just continue to work your way down, you can do it that way too but go ahead and line it up here and let me bring this over here all right line up my little sew cam on i hope you guys can see now lining up for a quarter inch seam allowance would bump me up right up to the edge of this foot but because we're doing a scant quarter inch seam i'm not gonna line it up directly underneath the side of this foot. I'm going to be off just a hair, maybe just about an eighth of an inch, bringing it in, and that should give me that scant quarter inch seam that we're looking for. So let's line that up here. And you can see it has a tiny little notch here. That's where I'm lining up my scant quarter inch. And so let me just grab my little petal here. I'm going to go ahead sew that up here and then since I've done one side I want to go ahead and do the opposite side so I'll grab another strip I'm going to go ahead and line that up here 
and do the same thing on the other side. Just lining it up with that little bit of a scant quarter inch. Okay. Then I'll go ahead and you'll want to open it up and give it a little press because you want to make sure that it's nice and flat. So I'll go ahead, open that up. I'm going to keep my this over to the side, my seams, so I can just press it down, lay it flat, and then I'll open up the sides and I'll iron that piece. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So now it's nice and flat and then I'll come back to my sewing machine and I'm going to go ahead and line up another piece. Again, just center it as best you can. Don't worry about being extremely perfect on this because the tool itself will help you cut it. And some of this is going to be cut off anyway. So go ahead and line it up and then let's sew it again. You'll notice that I'm not even going all the way down because I don't need to because that piece is going to be cut off. And so then I'm going to flip it over to the other side. I'm going to line it up again as best I can. Come underneath here, looking at a scant quarter inch seam. Bring down my little sewing needle and go ahead. Okay, then again, I'm gonna come back. Now move this over. I'm gonna come back over to our ironing station. I'm gonna go ahead and iron this, set the seam, and then just kind of open it up. And then go ahead and push that fabric with the iron. You know, make sure you're pushing it with the iron so that it can really open up on there. Then just go ahead and give it a nice press. You can turn it over if you'd like. I haven't cut any of my threads, so I do have a lot of threads going on here, so I'll grab those later. Then you're going to go over back to your cutting station and you're going to grab the ruler again. And now we are on row one, row two. This is row number three, so it's an odd number. So we're not going to be lining it up under the squares. We're going to be lining it up under the 45 degree angle that we have. So what you're going to do is you are going to line up your seam underneath the line and you can see here and I'll kind of lift this so you guys could see that. Do you see how I am lined up right underneath? Oops. You can see, let me take it off for a minute. Here's your square. And here is this seam allowance right here, right? That's the line that you want to line up under, right underneath here. Okay, so you'll take your ruler, you'll line it up under that seam allowance, and then you're going to use the dotted lines going across and you're going to want to line up your fabric so that you are right underneath and this center 45 degree angle is right in the middle of your point. So you have a nice point right there. And so when you do that and you've lined it up appropriately, you're gonna end up with a really nice trimmed block. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these off. Move this a little closer to me. Okay, just cut and then turn it. Line it up again. 
Make sure you're nice and centered. Go ahead and cut. Turn it again. Again, nice and centered. Make sure you're underneath. Use your guidelines. They really will help. Okay. Hold on. There we go. Okay. Oop. Hold on. Sorry, guys. <laughs> there we go. Let's try that again. Here we are. Long way there. Okay. Here, hold it down. Then go ahead and make the cut. And then one more time underneath. Make sure you're nice and lined up. And then make your cut. There we go. Okay. So this is the end of round three. Now grab this, give it again, another quick little press. And again, another perfect little block. Okay. And you're going to continue to go round by round and con you'll see that the block will just continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger until you end up with your six inch block. So at the end of round 10, you know, you'll end up with your square and then all you'll have to do is your corners in the end just to square it off. And then you can add this to a quilt, a table runner. You can do so many things with this. So it's a really nice little project, really neat. It's, it just grabs a lot of interest with the different fabrics that you can use. I've seen it, I mean, I've done two fabrics, but I've seen it with multiple fabrics for every round. So you can do that kind of crazy looking square also. So that's another little option that you have to be able to just make something a little bit different. So. It does take a little bit of time, but honestly, if you have your strips cut out ahead of time, it really goes a little faster. Once you kind of get familiar with the ruler, you can start banging these out a little bit easier. The first time is a little bit intimidating because there's a lot to this ruler, but there's a lot to this ruler that really helps to guide you so that you can make your perfect cuts and end up with a nice little block at the end. So a little bit of effort, a learning curve on this, but I really think this is a nice little ruler to add on to a nice project that maybe you're looking to make if you're looking to maybe quilt something of just a little bit different. So it does add a lot of visual interest depending on the fabrics that you pick. Um, I've seen it with some black fabric and like a, like a dark red or something that really stands out and it really makes it pop. So there's all kinds of different things you can do or you can use these nice bright colors <laughs> as well and you know that makes it pop as well but there's just so much things that you can do to add visual interest to this block that i thought it was worth the effort to you know just take the time to show you guys what you would need to do with this ruler and so many different things that you can do um, with all kinds of different projects so um I'm going to continue on the, probably the rest of the day to finish up my block. And what I'll do is I'll post a picture on our Facebook group so you can see what the finished um, block looks like. And maybe you want to try it out for yourself. You know, it's, it's really quick after you've learned the ruler. Um, it's re it can really bang this out pretty quickly. So let's see how long I take to kind of grab and make these. But um, I think there's a lot of fun on this and it's something that is a little bit different from what I've seen out there. So I hope you guys really enjoyed making this pineapple trim block with me. <laughs> I think it's a lot of fun and I hope you really enjoy it. 
I see a lot of people in the chat <laughs> and it's some people I don't know if you have maybe the ruler already maybe you want to kind of take it out of your closet dust it off maybe try doing it again again it can be a little intimidating when you first get the ruler but um, if you take it slow on the first time the second time when you make the second block it just goes a lot quicker because now it makes a lot more sense um, as you kind of move along it's a little scary because you're not sure if it, it's actually gonna come out when you're cutting but I was really amazed when um, I finished my first vlog and I was really excited on how it did come out. So I really enjoyed making it and I hope you will too. Um, thanks again for tuning in everyone. That's all I have for you today. Now, I hope you guys really enjoyed making the block or listening to your crafting tunes. <laughs> so have fun in your craft room today and I hope to be crafting with you soon. Bye everyone.